Now you have with you a quiz which is called office etiquette questionnaire and I request you all to complete this but just do one thing instead of the words yes and no which you find on page 6 please write down the words agree or disagree it will be simpler instead of the word yes and no please write down the words agree and disagree in place of yes write agree in place of no write disagree have you reached there have you gone to the have you reached the office etiquette questionnaire yes so on the very first sheet at the top we have said tick mark yes or no that you can replace with agree or disagree so any of these that you wish to discuss please feel free to take it up right now courtesy to students is not required what is your reply do you think it is required not required it is required how many feel it is required okay but some feel it is not required so can I have a you feel uh, Jagdish that it's not required courtesy like now we are talking of general situations now see the, what I have written uh, constructed in this question it is for general treatment we are not of talking of exceptions exceptions always have to be done on a case to case basis but we are talking of general behavior so what do you believe whether courtesy to students is required or not required what do you feel now so how would it express itself anyone who feels it is not required please let me know and it's our group you know so you don't have to think that I will lose face if I go against what others are saying it's not like that there could be a reason why somebody feels that curtsy is not required to them because I have very often seen teachers speak very roughly to students they speak very bossily to students when they ask them to get something they never thank them they never make a request I even you know like there are many such instances so if you believe in doing that say so it's not a sin to think that way but we can talk about it in fact if I just tell you something very interesting that happened yesterday in the, in the lab session I was talking to two of the colleagues and they were talking about a student who had uh, indulged in some negative behavior and uh, how they penalized him but in a positive manner so I was very curious to know what is this positive penalty and do you know what they gave him to do they gave him some X number of hours to put in in social work social service you know you have this NSS here so in that they asked him to take charge of a certain component and to put in extra time and I believe he has done such outstanding work he has thrown his heart and soul into it to show that he is very penitent plus he got involved in a very positive activity and uh, they are saying that now I mean the problem has been totally resolved so essentially it is not about I am not talking about freedom freedom limitations that those have to be set up that is not what we consider in etiquette but in etiquette we definitely are talking about how we treat our students we are not dronacharyas we must have a glorious thumb you know that's a very antiquated mode of looking at our students and to expect our students to fall at our feet right or wrong whether the professor is wrong or right the student has no right to challenge I'm really talking about just common courtesy and the reason is that if I if I'm not courteous to my students I don't know what will happen to them when they go to the workplace and they become seniors like I I am very often shocked to find that in some of the modern day banks uh, the junior and the senior their age difference may be just a year or two but the senior if he finds that the targets are not being met to his or her his satisfaction her doesn't shout but the uh, male senior if he finds that the target is not being met they actually not only shout but they abuse the junior and I said how can the junior even accept it why does he accept it now this is something which needs to be changed and you are all change agents so we have to look upon 
our students as grown-ups, as adults, who need to be treated with respect, but with limitations. You set your boundaries. You set the domain of freedom for them. That the student is not to touch me. The student is not to abuse me. Whatever. The student is to behave in this way or that. But in general conversation, definitely we can be polite to them, nice to them. If they have helped us out, why not thank them? They are helping us out. And so from that angle, it is nice to be courteous to them. We cannot be discourteous to them. Okay. Uh, any other statement from these five that you'd like to take? Okay. Now we go on to the next five. It's sometimes necessary to shout at colleagues in meetings. It is all right to stand in a corridor and talk loudly with a colleague. It is all right to speak loudly in front of someone's desk. It's all right to speak loudly with a student in the corridor. And it is necessary to be sarcastic with students in order to correct their mistakes. You disagree. Anybody who agrees with any of these statements? Do you agree that it is necessary to be sarcastic in order to correct a student? Sarcastic, the word itself is causing problem. Okay. Who knows the meaning of the word sarcastic? Yes. I know its interpretation in Marathi. We'll do. Tochun Perfect, perfect. Tochun <laughs> Talking, you know, you want, you want to poke the other guy and make him experience that. So now is it clear? Can we get on from there 11 to, to 15? Which one do you disagree with? All. Okay. Then 16 to 20. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Twelfth point. It is artificial to be polite to colleagues since one meets them daily. So if you agreed with that, why did you not agree with this one? No, the, I'll tell you in a question, have you always put in certain statements to cross-check whether you really mean what you say? <laughs> one and twelve are the same. Twelve number. Is it artificial to be polite? It is artificial to be polite to colleagues since one meets them daily. I want to ask you, in what forms would you like to express politeness? How are you polite to your colleagues? So does it mean if we are together for 15 days, uh, there will be, the, the smile will have disappeared? It will naturally come out. There is no artificial interest. Yesterday will be artificial. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. First day probably you are trying to be a little artificial. You are trying to reach out to others. But eventually it grows on you. Is it artificial or is it tending towards good relationship building? So that's the question to ask. Okay. Uh, so we go on to 16 to 20. If, if you're going for class, then of course the schedule is known to people. But if it's outside class, then it's courtesy to inform our office that I'm going to be away. But we can't be pretending to be in office while we have gone out to see somebody who is sick or something like that. So these are things we need to just guard against. Okay, uh, what about 20? All telephone calls should be answered with a greeting. Okay, 20, 21 to 25, 22nd first. Hmm? It's okay to sound sad or annoyed when you answer phone calls. All right. And 25? 24, I want to ask. It's 21, it's not always essential to give your name when you phone someone. When disagree, yeah, disagree. Uh, yeah, which is it, 25, you disagree with 25? Corrected assignments and test papers should be returned to students within two weeks. Within two weeks. Within means that's the upper limit. Within two weeks. It can definitely be less than two weeks, but not beyond. Yes. All right. Um, 
What about the emails? Nobody is taking up the email statements. All right, is correct to send emails without a greeting at the beginning and your name at the end? No. And it's not necessary to reply to emails or letters. <laughs> no, but uh, how many of you got my email? How many of you got my email? Oh, you did. How many of you didn't reply? That's a different story. Okay, so in terms of etiquette, to answer an email within 24 hours is expected. Yes, you have raised your hand. It depends what email ID you have given us. Because some email IDs, I believe, uh, yeah, there is some problem or uh, whatever. Or you have registered late, it is likely, after the date. So I didn't get it. But otherwise, I think I wrote emails to at least 20 people. 20 people who had confirmed, I have written to them. But I got only one query, and that was from Pragnya. It was just a query. And nobody else acknowledged my email. I would have appreciated a little letter or email saying, thank you, we look forward to meeting you there. So you are to <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will be writing to you hereafter, so please. <laughs> yeah. OK. <clears throat> it's all right. Now the next one is from 26 to 30. What do you think of 29? You must use your mother tongue even when you know that others in the room do not understand. Everybody? Yes. Okay, then you must tell your students also because one of the big issues in many of the companies I visit is that they routinely break into their mother tongue and whether or not the other colleagues understand them, they go on jabbering in their mother tongue, much to the alienation of the others. And that's what is making small, small groups. Ah, yes, I think so. In fact, the more neutral uh, language one can use, the more inclusive we are, the better it will be for this country and for us. Okay. And now the last sheet, 31 to the 36, you want an explanation to? 31. You should be natural and answer moodily if you are feeling depressed. Yes or no? no. Disagree. Disagree. Yeah, that's right. But there are some people who carry their home or other problems to the office and behave in that fashion, which is not fair to the others. I'll come to that. 31st is no. Disagree. You should not be. You should be. No, no, you sh no, no, the, the excuse they give is, no, the excuse given is that I am being natural. Why should I pretend when I am depressed or moody, why should I pretend to be otherwise? That's the reasoning that people give. Okay. 33, did you ask 33 anybody? All right, 34. Office staff can be asked to get one's bank Passbook updated. What do you think, Joan? Okay, I'll tell you the reason. The reason why the reason why the statement has been put in is that this amounts to personal work, and we must not ask the office staff to do our personal work. Okay. Uh, after that, you can sneeze without covering your mouth. You can yawn loudly or without covering your mouth. But I see many people do that. It's not all right to pick your nose or belch in public. Yes or no? Okay. But I see that also, so we have to guide people not to do that. You can comb your hair at your office desk. Disagree. Uh, there are some who carry a pocket comb in the back pocket. And they can go to restroom. Yes, but you see, there are some who show their back pocket with the comb. So that's another thing, you know. Please don't show it there. Uh, maybe somebody else will flick it out from there and use it. Okay. Sorry? Pocket comb, then hide it inside the pocket. It is half jutting out of the back pocket. Uh, <clears throat> it's okay not to return money borrowed from friends. In fact, 
once when I joined here, I somebody borrowed money from me. It wasn't a colleague, but somebody there. And then he never thought of returning it to me. So I, uh, I didn't know what to do about it. So I just kept quiet because it was very new. And then as I grew friendly with the others, one of them cautioned me, hey, X has a habit of borrowing money. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I said, your warning has come just a little late, but I'll be careful. OK. Now 42, 45. Okay, we have to tell others of our achievements, otherwise they will not know of it. What do you think of this? I'll tell you, I'll tell you there are definitely forums in which we can do it. Like there might be a newsletter, there might be a, an appraisal form where you fill it up, or you might get the, you may take the step to uh, make a presentation to the entire department on some work that you have done. So indirectly you may, show to people what work you have done. But boasting, boasting about our achievements is not well-mannered. <laughs>